At last, we've come to the final section of Paul's letter to the Philippians, and Paul closes by returning to the same theme that has permeated this entire letter, joy. Actually, in this case, great joy, or literally, mega joy. Paul recognizes that by sending their gift to him, the Philippians are demonstrating the Christ-like attitude that Paul has been urging them to adopt since the beginning of the letter. The Philippians have given of themselves so that their founder, friend, and brother in Christ might be comforted during his imprisonment in Rome. And Paul is thankful for the gift that the Philippians have given to him. But Paul also lets the Philippians in on the secret to his own joy and contentment. Paul says that he has learned the secret to being satisfied with whatever he has, wherever he is. He's had good days and bad. He's been in tough spots and lived on easy street. But no matter what, Paul says that he has found the secret to being joyful and content no matter his circumstances. And the secret, Paul says, is that in faith, he has been united with Jesus Christ. Paul has given up everything to gain Christ and the surpassing value of Christ means that no matter what happens to him, because he has been united with Christ, the thing that matters most to Paul can never be taken away from him. The life of Christ, fueled by the power of the resurrection, is now Paul's life. The strength of Christ, which overpowered sin and conquered death, is now Paul's strength. The glorious riches of God, which are able to meet every conceivable need, are made available to Paul in Christ and are given to him in abundant supply. And so Paul says that the secret to his contentment and satisfaction is that he has the mind of Christ, joyfully and gratefully accepting all that God has given to him. This isn't escapism. Notice that Paul isn't saying that the gospel means that Paul will achieve material wealth the way that we might typically understand it. Paul knows all too well that the gospel does not provide an escape from suffering or difficulty, nor is it a ticket to financial prosperity and riches. And this isn't self-sufficiency either. Paul isn't relying on his own abilities and resources to make it through the day. Instead, Paul relies on God to supply his every need. And this isn't just fatalistic resignation either. Paul isn't just accepting his lot in life and getting over it. Instead, Paul joyfully accepts everything God graciously provides for him, trusting that God loves Paul more than he can imagine, knows his needs more deeply than Paul does, and provides for Paul as a loving father. Paul trusts that Christ truly and fully reveals the character of God, That the person we see in the self-giving life of Jesus is who God really is. And that means that God gives of himself to Paul in the same way that Jesus gave himself for the world. And as is so often the case, the way God provides for Paul is through other people. In this case, it was the Philippians' gift that met Paul's needs as he sat in prison awaiting trial. Through their generosity... Paul would have had what he needed to survive in prison and continue his work of spreading the gospel. But notice that Paul describes their gift in terms of a sacrifice. This is how the Philippians are taking on the mindset of Christ. Through their giving and self-sacrifice for Paul, they're doing exactly what Paul has encouraged them to do earlier in the letter, imitating the self-sacrifice of Christ. And by imitating Christ and living out their faith in him, the Philippians are increasingly being united with Christ. As they serve Christ and become like him, they become one with him. Union with Christ has been the source of Paul's unshakable joy. And so it's no surprise that Paul expects that as the Philippians are united with Christ, they would experience that same joy Paul has received. Paul has received everything he needed from his union with Christ. And so Paul expects that the Philippians would similarly have their needs fully satisfied in Christ. And because all of this is the glorious gospel lived out in the everyday life of ordinary people, Paul expects that all of this will add to the already spectacular glory of God. We started this series off by talking about Paul's unshakable joy. And we wondered how it was that given his imprisonment and a capital charge hanging over his head, he could muster the strength to remain faithful, let alone rejoice. Now we can see the secret to Paul's joy. 
He's shaken off everything that doesn't matter in order to gain Christ, the one thing that really does matter. And in faith, Paul has been united with him. His life has been joined to Christ and is now powered by his resurrection. In love, Christ has clothed Paul with his glory and shared his vindication with Paul. And God's own joy in bringing salvation to the world he made has become available to Paul and all of us as we are united with Jesus Christ the one who gave everything to make us his own and shares the riches of his glory with us, including his unshakable joy. Thank you for being a part of this online Bible study. I hope you enjoyed it, but more importantly, I hope you're taking something away from our eight-week-long journey through this remarkable letter of Paul. Next week, we'll begin a new four-week Bible study of the parables of Jesus led by Pastors John and Becky, and I encourage you to check back next week for what I am sure will be an insightful study of the teachings of Jesus. As we finish our time together, let me leave you with Paul's final words to the Philippians. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.